Hello everyone and welcome to the fabric dye video. So actually this is the second time I am filming this. I filmed this yesterday and I was planning on uploading yesterday which is Wednesday but the file got lost. My phone phone's memory was full and then it kind of deleted the video. So I only have like the second half of what I filmed that is with the coffee so I will insert that that I filmed yesterday I'm not going to redo that part but unfortunately the things are already mixed they're already done I filmed actually mixing them and making the solutions and yeah lost the video so I was extremely negative yesterday so I didn't refilm yesterday. I was just, I was too upset to be honest. I was just so irritated and frustrated. So, and it took a while. That's, that's what bothers me. It took a while to film that. And yeah, so I, I didn't redo that yesterday. Doing it today. So I will explain how I made these solutions. I'm not going to make any again because, you know, then I have too much. So... I'm just going to show you the ones that I already made and then explain how I made them. And you will see some more information on the coffee and testing the acidity and all that in the next part, like the second half of this video. But this, yeah, okay, let's start on one side. So this is a tea and coffee solution that I use to dye my papers. So I make the tea like you would make tea when you drink it. Uh, but I use two bags instead of one and I don't add that much water like only half the cup boiling water and then I leave it for a while to steep I used just normal black tea this is English breakfast brand that we get here in Korea this is not dark enough for me like even if you use two bags maybe if you use less water obviously it will come out darker or more bags but I just mix some coffee with it to get the, the color that I want. But you can use any black tea. So this is English breakfast. Um, I think that you know normal black tea that are, that's a bit stronger will also give you a deeper color. So you can play with the kinds of tea. But I think black tea would be the best. I actually want to try, we have a tea in South Africa and you can actually find it here too. Uh, Rooibos tea which has this pinky color to it. So I actually want to try dyeing some paper with that. Um, but that will be in a next video and next experiment. And I will update you on that if and when I do that. But yeah, for now, this is just two black tea bags. And it's steeped for a while. And then I added just a teaspoon of instant coffee. So this is Maxim again a brand that we can find here in Korea. It's a hundred percent coffee and it is Affordable, but not too cheap. So that's another thing. Um, yeah, I I really hope I don't forget to say things because it feels like I I already said it because I already filmed but yeah, so don't use things that are too cheap when it comes to the coffee and tea because they stick the paper together, especially if you're going to lay them out on top of each other to air dry. And they kind of ruin the paper. That's happened to me before. Um, but also with cheap paper. So don't buy too cheap coffee or too cheap tea. You don't have to have the best quality stuff. <laughs> of course not. Keep those for drinking. But yeah, so just not too cheap. And I would go for 100% coffee and something that's not mixed with like chicory or anything like that. A lot of instant coffee is mixed with chicory and I don't know what that would do to the paper. I guess you can try it, but for what I like, you know, just stick it to 100% instant coffee. You can also brew coffee, but again, that is more trouble and more difficult to adjust the color and things like that. So yeah, just instant. Okay, so I mix tea and coffee. You can use only one or the other. 
Uh, I've used only the coffee and I've made the most beautiful dark pages. So that's also great. Um, you can experiment with mixtures and how much you use of coffee and tea. And then you also need to adjust the acidity. You have to neutralize the acid because otherwise it will take decades, but it will damage your page. Um, it's not very archival, so the paper won't last for posterity if that is what you have in mind. If you're making a book that's supposed to be an heirloom or a keepsake and you want it to last for as long as possible, you should neutralize the acid in your coffee. That, there, that's not a problem with the fabric dye um, because fabric dye nowadays, it, it's non-toxic. It, it doesn't have all of that in it. For the most part, always check your packaging. But yeah, so fabric dye, that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. But with the coffee, you have to neutralize. So that is the part that you will see in the second half of the video. I did not lose that part. Um, I did lose the first testing. So what you do is you use these little testing strips. They test the pH level of your solution this is for anything for urine saliva so this is actually a medical testing strip but it works on any kind of liquid that you have so i use this before adding the baking soda i dip it in you only need to dip it for like a second or two to just get it nice and saturated you take it out and it immediately starts coloring you can immediately see it's you know starting to show the levels but just wait like 30 seconds or so just to be sure and then you have this little paper that comes in the box you can get these i bought mine on amazon for really cheap like a few dollars but you can get them at any kind of drugstore or pharmacy i'm pretty sure and they're not very expensive depending on the brand but you can just get like cheap ones so after you dip it in you wait a few seconds and then you hold it up here to check the the ph levels so pH that is less than 7 is very alkaline and more than 7 is very acidic. No, no, I'm wrong. It is very acidic, less than 7, and very alkaline, more than 7. So you don't want it to go past like the 7 either. You don't want an um, alkaline solution. You want a neutral solution. So then you just hold it up here and check where the level is and that kind of gives you an idea of how much baking soda to add so if you get a reading that is right down here you're gonna have to add more baking soda to get it to here obviously I mean that's just common sense so usually I get a reading around four or five so here is the test strip that I used yesterday it's very dry now but you can still see the result so it's like around four or five closer to five so then I know that I don't have to add a lot of baking soda to neutralize it. So I literally take the smallest, like I take the teaspoon and only fill like the little tip of it and add it into the solution. Stir it, wait a few seconds, and then you can test it again. Okay, so after I tested it, you kind of get the hang of how much to add. And like I say later in the video, you can write down how much you use like how much water how much coffee how much baking soda so that every time you can recreate that um but so this i just test it every time because i have the strips and it's fun it feels like a science experiment i always love those in school okay so this is the one that i tested it with after adding the baking soda and then you can see okay it is it is neutral okay so that is how you do with the coffee the fabric dye mixing is much simpler so all you do is that you get some hot water you do not need boiling water you can just open your hot water on the tap and try to get it warmer than lukewarm but it doesn't have to be boiling hot but like nice hot water and then you mix the powder dye uh, where is the color that I used Okay, so I use Dylan. It says uh, multi-purpose dye, but you get writ dye. You get so many different fabric dyes. Uh, this is a powder that you mix with water. 
You get liquid ones. I've never used those. This is the only brand I've ever used, and I have really great results with it. So, all you do is you add, I literally just make cut open a tiny little hole. I add some powder in, and I mix it thoroughly until it's thoroughly dissolved. That might take a while. You know, you keep stirring. And, of course, if the water is warmer, it will dissolve easier. I do paint my papers with the warm water. I feel like it seeps in really nicely. However, these are completely cold now because I mixed them yesterday and they still work perfectly if they're cold. It doesn't really matter. But you can use the warm solution. You don't have to wait for it to be cold. So that's all you do. You just throw it in the water and you mix it. Then I don't have exact amounts. Like the same with the coffee. I don't have... An exact amount of water and an exact amount of dye I eyeball it you know I just mix them and then I do a test strip or test paper and then if I need to adjust the color it's very simple I either add more water to get it lighter or I add more dye to get it darker you can also paint a page dry it and then paint it again to get you know a deeper color so that's very simple with the fabric dye mixing it um, the other thing that I will say is that you need gloves, okay, just these like normal doctor's gloves. You can also get them for very cheap at most drugstores or pharmacies or online. Um, so yeah, I've used these a couple times. I used them a few times before throwing them out. So yeah, because the coffee and the tea and the fabric dye, they can stain your fingers. I don't dip my papers, which you will see. A lot of people dip them and lay them out to dry. I don't do that. I have done that before, and sometimes you can get some cool effects, but I don't. That's not my favorite way. Some people bake their papers with the tea and coffee dye, and then they bake them. Again, tried that. Not crazy about it, because you have to keep, like, you know, changing it out in the oven. It's just... I feel like I'm scrambling a lot more and I don't like that where with this I can just sit down I paint my papers I will show you that I paint my papers I use a hairdryer and it is one by one so it takes a while you can stack them a little and then dry them with the with the hairdryer I have done that but yeah I like this process and especially like with the TNs I only need a few pages so it won't take me that long. I might want like four green papers and five coffee dyed papers. You know, it's not that many. And I find the process to be quite relaxing. So that is what I do. If you want to see how people do it with air drying and baking them in the oven, you can just search that on YouTube. There are many videos about that. So yeah. I am going to start showing you how I paint on the dye and how I actually dye the paper. Ah, okay, and this is just clean water. And I use that to create some effects on the paper. Or if I need to, like when I'm mixing them and I need some extra water, I have it here and I don't have to get up and go get it. So yeah, I just have some clean water, you know for for in case you know i need that i do make some effects with it and you will see that in the second part of the video that i didn't lose so this video might seem a little scattered and if i do repeat myself with things i'm sorry i did look at the other video to make sure what information i have but there might be some repeats of information and yeah, so this video is going to be a little bit more scrambled than I wanted it to be, but yeah, so we just have to work with it. Oh, and also, another thing you might want is wet wipes. You can use any kind of wet wipes, no special kind, or some, oh, and some paper towels or that are dry or a dry washcloth. I mostly only use the wet wipes for everything. So this is really great to clean the surface that you're dyeing on. So you can see from yesterday I have some dye on it still. So I use the wet wipe and it removes it 
perfectly you know cleans it this is just a cutting board the grid and everything is on the other side but i've got so much paint and stuff on the other side so i just flipped it over and so it's much smoother on this side so i just use this and it does kind of buckle a little because it's plastic when you use the hair dryer but it's fine a glass plate would actually be the best and i am going to get me one of those because it's very multi-purpose you can mix paint on it you can use glass for everything and it cleans very easily but for now i have just this cheap plastic cutting board so i'm going to clean off this surface with the wet wipe and then first i will show you how i paint on the fabric dye and then dry it and what that comes out like and then I'll do one with the coffee and then I will probably jump to the other clip that I filmed yesterday but so I have some of the pages that I did yesterday so you can just see so you will see me making this one in the the clip from yesterday it has the olive green and then darker green so you'll see that and then you'll also see how I made this one different color so that will be in the later clip and this is what it comes out like when you just paint it and oh this one also has some of the splotches you'll see that in the next part okay so yeah that is how they come out and here is a coffee one that I did yesterday but yeah okay so I'm going to show you how to do it anyway so first of all, so I use these sponges um, to paint it on. The big one is obviously faster. I just have two because I put one in the fabric dye and one in the coffee dye. So yeah, have a few of these and like different sizes for different things that you want to do. But yeah, so I use sponges, not brushes. I have used a brush, but it's difficult or more difficult to get a smooth finish with a brush. I prefer the sponges okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your paper this is just normal copy paper and like I said don't buy anything too cheap because they will not come out good they will be fine when you just do it and then after a while you know some weird shit starts happening so um, try to get just like a good mid-range not too cheap copy paper you can Dye other kinds of paper, scrapbook paper, line paper. I do actually have some line notebook paper that I'm going to dye. So you can experiment with all different kinds of paper and cardstock and all that stuff. But I'm just showing you what I do the most, and that is coffee paper. Coffee paper. <laughs> coffee paper. Ugh, it's early in the morning. Sorry, guys. Okay. So I'm first going to do a fabric dye one. So you just dip it into the solution. You can leave the sponge in there for a while so it can soak, soak it up a little. So you just dip in the tip of it. And then I normally, if I want a really smooth color, I start on off the paper. So off of it and then I sweep over the edge and back. So, for the most part, you'll still get some different coloration on the edges. Like, you can see it seeps in more on the edges. That happens, and sometimes when you dry it, that kind of even out, evens out, and other times it doesn't. But you kind of want them to not look too perfect or uniform. You kind of want, you know, variations in how they dye. But... This, for the most part, gives a nice even dye that is not very splotchy or has a lot of like patterns or anything on it. It's quite even, but you can still see that this is hand dyed and not a colored paper that you bought. Okay, so yeah, you get it like nice and saturated. And that's another reason why I like to paint it with the sponge and not dip. Because I feel like I can get the page much more saturated, but it's not that wet. It dries faster. Um, I hope that makes <laughs> sense. So yeah, so if you turn over, you'll see that it's seeped in 
on the edges so that happens and sometimes when you paint over it will kind of even out a little but yeah so I, I like this because I get it very saturated but the color is very saturated but the page is not as soaked and wet and I can really have an even color and it dries pretty fast when you use the hair dryer. Okay, so that is all you do. And when you do turn over the pages, just be careful because they are very fragile when they're wet. Okay, so then I get my hair dryer. I will turn off the sound for this in editing because I think that would melt your ears. But yeah, so then I just put it on a high setting pretty hot, pretty fast airflow, just to dry it really fast. Oh, and it's not plugged in. Of course not. Oh. Okay, there we go. Okay, there it is dry. So that is how they come out. It's, it's really beautiful. And you can see here it actually got some strange patterns and staining, which I like, you know, it's not going to be completely uniform, that's the point. So yeah, that is with the fabric dye. Then with the coffee, it is the same thing, you paint it on the same way. Uh, where is my other sponge? Oh, it is. Okay, so you dip it in the solution, get it to saturate the sponge. And then you just paint on. So I actually think the next clip, the one that I have from yesterday, shows this part too. Um, but yeah, I, I will check that in editing. Maybe leave it in or change it. But I'd rather film too many things now than not enough, you know? So I feel like this is actually coming out a little darker than yesterday. So that might be a good reason to leave it in. So yesterday's was with the warmer solution, and like freshly made. This is like, it's been standing overnight, cooled down, but it looks like it's darker than yesterday. So yeah. But yeah, so okay, that is what you do. And then the same thing, you take your hair dryer, you dry the page on both sides, and you're done. And you can stack a few of them. I've done that when I've gotten impatient. I don't do that with the fabric dye all that often because then it becomes too weird looking on the paper. But I've done that with the coffee. So I make like a few pages on top of each other, and then I dry them with the hair dryer a little bit and then I just leave them to air dry. So you can do that if you are getting impatient and you want to do more at one time. I also like doing it with the hair dryer because then I can, if I want to, they're immediately dry and I can immediately use the papers. But you can also see that they kind of curl a little bit, you know, they're not very flat. So usually as I'm dying and the page is dry uh, and it starts curling up I will put it underneath something heavy so that it starts to flatten out as I'm dyeing the rest of my papers but yeah so you can play with this a lot you can play with saturation like how much coffee you use how much tea how much fabric dye you add and then of course I talk about some different techniques how to get some patterns and you can really play with it it's very very fun it's not very difficult it's not like you're gonna completely screw it up it's it's relaxing it's and it's fun and you get very unique papers to use in your projects but okay so here i am going to switch it to the other clip that i have from yesterday where i will be showing you like how i tested the ph for the coffee after the baking soda and it will show you some more dyeing of paper <laughs> 